Hey everybody, this is Killer Arcade Games. I'm Chris, and today we're going to watch a walkthrough I recorded of the Cidercade in Fort Worth, Texas. This is a pretty good sized arcade location. It spans between two buildings. It has around 255 games by my count. I think their website says 275. Maybe I miscounted, maybe I missed something, but this is a total walk through the place. I've been there a couple times now, but it's been too busy to film it. I got there early on a Friday, right when they opened, and I was able to get a good recording of the place. What I'll do is play the walkthrough first. That way, if you're just here to see that, you can watch that and move on. And then I'll go through it again, and you can hang out and hear my thoughts on the arcade itself.
All right, I hope you enjoyed that walkthrough, or if you skipped it just to hear what I have to say as we go through it again, that's fine too. Let's start it now so this video is not way too long. So the, of course it was Christmas around this time, so they were decorated for Christmas, but yeah, it's one of the only complaints that comes to mind right away when I see this arcade, and this kind of is a problem at a lot of their locations, is it's, uh, you can see the glare coming off the screens here. They have a lot of glass in the buildings, and some of the screens that are facing outside really tend to get a lot of really bad glare. In fact, this Mortal Kombat 4 cabinet that's over here, you guys know I love MK4. I want to play it, but the glare was pretty rough, even in the morning like that, and it was overcast outside. That's really one of the only problems I can knock this place for. It's really great otherwise. I really wish they'd build one closer to me. This is now their uh, fourth location. They have a Dallas, Houston, Austin, and now Fort Worth. And they're about to open one in Arlington, which I'm excited to see what they put there also. Come on, San Antonio. If you could put one in San Antonio, I'd be appreciative, but we'll get there eventually. One thing I always marvel at with this place is not only their crazy range of games from the 70s all the way up to you know modern day games, is the fact that all the games that have CRTs in them or are supposed to have CRTs in them still have CRTs in them. Even the vector graphics ones, by the way, look at this. My initials are still all over this cabinet. I dominate the Killer Kings. It's not my real initials, but I put CAG on there for the Killer Arcade games. Uh, that Killer Instinct is one of two in the building, and it is actually the better of the two. That one is in great shape. The other one has some monitor issues. Here's an Empire Strikes Back. That is a cool one to see. I rarely see that version of the game. We got a Target Terror not in the dedicated, but again, you get the glare, and it's not really worth trying. Um, I did enjoy trying this Wheel of Fortune, though. It was an interesting game I'd never seen before. They do have two Guitar Heroes, by the way. Those things are so valuable, I'm surprised they can afford to have two of them. And these Japanese beat games, I don't really understand them, of course, because I can't read what it's saying, but they look fun. I just never gave them much of a shot, really. I kind of sped through this part on accident here, but that was a Darius Burst cabinet. I don't know much about that game, but people seem to love that game. And it's the big, gigantic deluxe one. It looks really cool. There's also, let me try to back this up slowly, Big Buck Hunter and Golden Tee. Those two got kind of skipped over. The four-player Mario Kart cabinets. Somebody had just played it. That's why that one was just sitting there. There was a kid that walked in right as I got in, and she went right to it. But those are always so busy when I go on the weekends that I can't play those usually. I, you have to wait in line, pretty much. This game, I had never really played this game. And... As I'm playing it, I'm looking around realizing I don't know the name of this game. You guys have to let me know in the comments. I played it, no idea what the name of the game is. It was pretty fun. A little too simulator feeling to me, but it still was, you know, fun to check out. I haven't seen a Lost World in quite some time. Let me try to pause on a not too blurry screen. We had this cabinet at the one of the arcades I worked at in the past and it was always a banger. Everybody loved it. I also like that bowling game. I don't know why, it's a lot of fun to play that. I would either buy Silver Strike or that one if I could, or if I wanted a bowling game in the shed cade here. I like this decor here. This is kind of like the portal to the next building. You can get to it through the outside doors, but that one's really cool to see. It looks good on camera. A lot of people taking selfies in there and stuff. Uh, I love that they include Skee-Ball. You can play it all you want. It's free. Star Wars Trilogy there, Burger Time Cabinet. Um, two Simpsons cabinets. I've, this location is so big, they have multiples of each game. Um, not all the time, but some of them. You'll see quite a few. There's two MK4s, two Killer Instinct cabinets, which we'll talk about that Killer Instinct in a minute. Blast City cabinets here. Third Strike right there. Another one of those... I don't know if that one's a Japanese game. Okay, let me pause here. You can see more CAG on the screen there, by the way. That Killer Instinct... When I came to this location and played this Killer Instinct, my initials were already there, and I was kind of confused at first. Well, if you remember my Austin Cidercade walkthrough, I'll just let it play for now. Oh, hold on. Let me pause on the Killer Instinct story. Revolution X! God, I was so happy they had this game. In fact, I bugged one of the techs when I was there the first time. Like, hey man, do you think you could turn the volume up? Because I couldn't hear the game, and this game has a great soundtrack. Soundtrack, not tracked. If you're not an Aerosmith fan, it's still a good game. I don't know, it's so exciting to play it. I really like that game. I would love to put it in the shed, but it just doesn't have a ton of replayability. But yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to find nowadays anyway, but I like it a lot. So the Killer Instinct already had my initials on it. 
the board came from the Austin location where they have a KI2 cabinet that used to have both KI1 and 2 in it and you could switch between the boards. Eventually they took the KI1 out, which was devastating to me because at the time I didn't actually have the killer instinct that's behind me here. So I couldn't play it anymore and I was like, God, Terminator 2, by the way, awesome game. Um, by the way, Lady Cag's initials are still on the Star Wars cabinet. She was thrilled. We are buying that Star Wars pinball machine soon. We're hoping to find a brand new one. So it holds a ton of value. It's in great shape. It'll be home use. She's going to be really excited when we get one of those. I hope we could still find a new one. Uh, but yeah, I wish that they had put at least left. They have two killer instincts at this building or this location. They could have left the KI-1 at the Austin location, which in my opinion is really suffering game selection wise, at least for my taste. So I'm hoping they'll move it back one day. Maybe they've done it and I just haven't been in a while, but they also took away the Star Wars pinball from the Austin location and that devastated Lady Cag. I want to pause here on this game, Merit Boardwalk. Never heard of this in my entire life. I'd never seen this game ever. I played it here for the first time. Very interesting game. It's like, it's probably PC based. You have to load between each game you select. It's not great, but it's interesting. That's for sure. Uh, Choplifter. There's some games here that I probably haven't heard of. Some of these were before my time. There's an interesting uh, selection of games here. I do like that they consider all ages here. You know, mom and dad can bring the kids, they can play the new games, and mom and dad can play these older games they played as kids. Seawolf, this is an interesting game. I love to see this older cabinet. I think they have the newer version of it coming up later in this walkthrough. The Nicktoons Nitros, those are pretty fun. The new Time Crisis is fun, but I still like the older ones better, I think. And these behemoth cabinets, these are always full of kids when I go. I was able to actually play them this time, but I don't really get as excited about these for some reason. How about Elon Musk there on the right? <laughs> oh, these Area 51 Site 4, they have two of these also. This is a game I never really got to play. This was the first time I really got to play it. It's not as good as the first one, unfortunately, but it was still interesting to finally see it. Got some bad dudes. Oh, this gigantic Connect 4. This was, I had to do like the fisheye lens for this one to capture all this machine. Fun game, Target Force, I'm gonna stop. Because if you're a fan of the channel, you know I have a Target Terror cab sitting right here. They also had a Target Terror, but they also have this Target Force. It's the same game. It just has a different name. In fact, I could change this cabinet behind me to say Target Force just with a menu change setting. But interesting, they had both there. I didn't get a chance to see the side art. I wanted to see if it was different and said Target Force, but I did not look. I forgot. That's a pretty cool little seating area they have right here. Um... They, they serve pizza. They have, of course, awesome ciders. I'm not doing a commercial for them. They've never paid me or anything. I paid to get in. I'm happy to support them. I don't drink much alcohol, but I do like their ciders. They're really good. They also have sodas you can get, but a good place to hang out and eat. It's just really nice to think about. There it is, the new Sea Wolf game. So that one is a ticket-based game. Here's a new Pump It Up cabinet. I assume it's a new one. I used to be good at that when we had it in the arcade. I don't think I dared make a fool of myself now in public on it. Centipede, my dad is actually kind of like, hey, get me a centipede, boy. I don't know if he's serious. We may get him an arcade one up. He used to play it a ton back in the day, but it's a long story. If I get him a centipede, I'll do a video on it, even if it's arcade one up. Joust. Oh man, the super punch out with the dual screens. That's a cool cabinet. It's, I don't ever see that at most arcades anymore. Cidercade seems to have several of these. Once again, I can't believe the amount of games that they must own as a company. Uh, somebody f did comment on one of my videos saying I think it was their dad or their family that owns the arcade side of Cidercade. And I'm dying to talk to that person. So if you see this video again, leave me a comment. I have a million questions. I don't know how you guys keep all this up and running. And if you notice, there's almost no games that are down. All games that have CRTs or vector monitors still have those monitors, it's baffling to me how you guys keep these up and running with the amount of play and abuse they get. UMK3 in an MK2 cabinet. I don't know what that game is. I've never seen this game before. It looks like Parappa the Rapper style graphics. But I don't know what that says. Mighty Pang, I think. Never seen that before. Invasion the Abductors in a non-dedicated cabinet. I know the Dallas location. I think they have a dedicated invasion cabinet. I could be wrong though. Cyberball Tournament. I counted that as two games. I don't know. Venom, I believe that is. Oh, Vendetta. I'm dumb. It's right there. 
Shoes. This is a weird game. I played that a few times and never saw that game before in my life before that. Uh, I believe that's the first Cidercade to have pool. I've never seen pool at a Cidercade, but it was pretty popular when I've been there on the weekends. We got a Terminator. I like that version better. That with the hold guns, and guns you can actually hold and reload. Another Area 51 Site 4. Open Ice Challenge. I think it's just Open Ice. I don't know. Midway game that you don't see very often, especially in the southern states, I assume. Dark Legacy, Gauntlet Dark Legacy cabinet, those are cool. I I want to dedicate time to play those, but sitting in an arcade playing them is not that much fun. Cruise and Blast is always a blast for a short time. Basketball, huge people love those there. Lady Cag plays them when we go. Clown, it's kind of fun to play these ticket games, even though you can't win tickets. It's still fun just to throw things at, uh, you know, throw balls at little uh, fluffy clown guys. I don't know why. Got a foosball table, Killer Queen. I'm no good at Killer Queen, or I've never played it enough to be good at it. Air Hockey also. Narc, I love the Narc cabinet, interesting cabinet. Uh, Virtua Fighter is always cool. Tube and Thin cabinet. Can't even read some of these names. I wish it would have uh, locked in better. Mortal Kombat 4. This one, this is the one I play the most because it doesn't have any real glare coming from outside, but it does have some monitor issues. Nothing terrible, blooming issues, things like that. Uh, I wish the joysticks were better on it, but playing it made me realize how much I just want to get a real dedicated MK4 in here. Uh, I have the arcade one up that I, I did not make, but I bought, and it has the arcade PCB inside. I think it's time to upgrade to the CRT-based behemoth, the dedicated cabinet. Another Star Wars cabinet. Those things are so crazy. They seem valuable to me, especially since also the Guitar Hero. They have two Guitar Heroes. They can afford two Guitar Heroes, two Star Wars cabinets. It's pretty insane the amount of games they have. Well, guys, that's all. I hope you go check out this Cidercade. I am so lucky to live in an area, even though Texas is absolutely massive and a pain to get anywhere. It's like three hours from where I am to any of the major cities outside of Austin. At least three hours. But I'm lucky to have some of the largest arcades. You know, they say everything's bigger in Texas. The Cidercade locations are, not a one of them is under 100 games as far as I know. They have a lot of games. They're on $10 free play based model. You pay at the door, play everything you want for free, pinball included. It's just a really great thing that we have here in Texas. I hope Cidercade does well. I hope they continue to grow. Maybe they'll branch outside of Texas soon. I don't know. If they go outside of Texas before giving me one here in San Antonio, I'm going to be pretty, pretty devastated, but that's all right. Uh, thank you guys for watching this. Let me know if you've ever been to a Cidercade or if you've even heard of them. If you haven't, some of the people who watch these videos tell me, man, I live in Houston or whatever, and I did not know this was here. So I'm hoping these videos get the word out. Not that they need more business. They're doing very well from what I can tell. If you go there on a weekend, it is packed full of people. So if you can get there on a weekday while people are at work or school, you're going to have probably the best time. But still, if you have kids, bring them out. They're going to love this place. So let me know if you've been to a side arcade. Let me know what you think of the place. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more arcade content if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching.